for measuring uh, reciprocating velocity, we have seen last time a seismic mass mounted over a spring and uh, damper uh, used as uh, velocity for the purpose of velo uh, measuring reciprocating velocity. Now, this is another version, this modified seismic velocity pickup. Here, uh, the conventional mass is replaced by the coil because for in the earlier setup, we had the mass, we had the mass here and uh, spring, this is damper. And uh, to measure the uh, relative velocity of the mass, we had separately the moving coil, moving magnet pickup like that. Now, the uh, moving coil uh, weight itself is taken as uh, mass here for this instrumentation. So, that is the only difference. So, this was our earlier uh, instrumentation. So, now this mass and the coil mass are, this is our permanent magnet and uh, permanent magnet. This permanent magnet is here as it is and uh, the coil mass is uh, taken as the seismic mass here. So, seismic mass is the coil itself and the spring constant for spring uh, you have got uh, the, uh, the whole mass is suspended from a spring and for a damping purpose this whole volume is filled up with uh, uh, an oil preferably a silicon oil which does not uh, decompose in course of time. So, damping is from the uh, filled oil the spring for the spring you have got this is K s for the mass the coil itself. So, uh, the same vibrating body, the whole instrument is fixed to the vibrating body, bottom is the vibrating body, a table or whatever it is, whose velocity you are interested to measure. So, bolt it and as it uh, vibrates more than the uh, natural frequency of this uh, mass spring system, say twice more than that, then you will find the relative motion of the mass with reference to the frame that is uh, now the uh, permanent magnet itself forms part of the frame fixed to that. So, any relative motion you have got a uh, voltage output. So, this voltage output will represent when the uh, when the uh, frequency is more than much more than the natural frequency uh, the input velocity itself that what you have learnt yesterday. So, this is one, one modified version of the earlier type of seismic pickup where we have separately a mass, but the mass and the coil are combined together in this setup. So, it is cheaper in this sense and simple in construction. So, this completes our uh, measurement of um, respirating velocity. We are uh, we are seeing three type of velocities. One is continuous motion, second respirating motion, and the third one is velocity of rotating objects. This is simple to measure. Hence, we find uh, large methods, large number of methods are available for measuring um, uh, rotating speeds, RPM, or uh, kilo or um, uh, rotation per second, rotation per hour. All these things are available in uh, plenty. Uh, we few of them we will see. The first one is uh, the flyball sensor is uh, used uh, since a long time, um, especially in power plants. The turbine uh, temp uh, turbine uh, uh, speed is controlled by having uh, um, this uh, flyball mechanism. This flyball sensor it senses the uh, speed of the uh, turbine shaft and uh, gives a signal uh, for the control of the speed. So, you find uh, the flyball mechanism, this flyball mechanism that is if m is the mass of the, this m is the mass of the flyball, then centrifugal force equal to m omega squared r proportional to omega squared, omega being rotating speed. So, this force is transmitted to this collar, this is the collar which is uh, mounted free on the rotating shaft, rotating shaft rotates at omega. So, the part of the force uh, the, through the linkage, the force, uh, the centrifugal force is transmitted to this collar. So, the collar tries to rise, try to rise and in the process it, it is compressing a spring. So, proportional to the force it gets compressed and uh, that distance is, this is our uh, output signal x o. So, the, now if you plot uh, the x o versus omega, you got some nonlinear characteristics that is because of the quadratic equation com comes into picture, but uh, the operating speed of the turbine will be somewhere in the middle of this uh, linear portion of the curve. So, the speed will be varying along this, then immediately if speed falls down, then the governor, this is uh, the centrifugal, uh, it will be sensed when it speed falls, this comes closer and then uh, some linkage will be actuated and uh, the some more, uh, I mean turbine speed, steps will be taken to increase the turbine speed. That is for power plants operation, this is uh, oil used. 
still in some of the tachometers fly ball mechanism are still used old type. This one are the conventional methods and now we have got the modern methods of rota uh, measuring um, uh, uh, measuring the shaft rotation, but if there in the rotating shaft itself we have connected suitably the fly balls. This is the shaft where it, there we have connected, but now we find in the rotating shaft we fix one of the own reflecting tape. This is supplied by the manufacturer. So, we just cut a small piece and uh, fix it, it will, it will have its own adhesive, you can just paste it on the, on the shaft. And uh, this is uh, based upon the um, uh, photoelectric uh, speed probe, but um, uh, even before that we have learnt uh, this proximity pickup, we already learnt proximity pickup. Where uh, if uh, we have the suppose uh, yeah, to the rotating shaft, to the rotating shaft, a yeah, gear is fixed. This is yeah, a gear, so um, uh, a gear is fixed, and uh, to uh, and uh, at the top of uh, at, at the rim, at near about the rim of the uh, rotating uh, gear, we can fix a proximity pickup. This is proximity pickup. Whenever your tooth come. Uh, comes in front of the proximity pickup, one pulse is given. Suppose there are uh, 10 teeth, then 10 pulses will be given and this is connected to, uh, this is connected to universal, uh, universal electronic counter, where it can be counted per second. So, per second so many uh, pulses will be there, that divided by the 10 will give the uh, R, uh, RPM per second. Suppose uh, the you can select a different base, one second or ten second, whatever it is. Suppose if you select one, se one second, whatever be the pulse, it will count it, and that if you divide by ten, that will give you the rotating speed per second. That is the uh, inductance principle. The principle is here is inductance principles. The inductance varies whenever a tooth comes. So inductance principle. So when you don't have any gear, anything like that, what you then what you can do? You can uh, substitute gear by a uh, screw. Now the shaft is there. We can substitute it by a screw head. Yeah, just to, uh, by a screw head, and uh, now put your uh, proximity pickup near the near the screw. Whenever the screw head comes in front of the prox proximity pickup, one pulse will be uh, made. Yeah, in all these uh, methods, uh, we are measuring the pulses. That's why we call we, we can call it pulse counting method of speed measurement. There we are measuring the uh, when the when the reluctance. This actually reluctance variations. We are under inductance principles. When the reluctance varies, we got one pulse, and uh, the, and in the um, uh, in the other one. We have the uh, in another method we can have light source instead of the inductance principle we can have light source. Uh, in this uh, probe tip we have got light source. The, it contains uh, two chambers at the top chamber. Now we have the lamp and the bottom one we have got the uh, photo cell. And uh, in the rotating shaft we fix a tape like a um, reflecting tape, and uh, the light uh, falls on the tape and it gets reflected. Whenever the tape comes in front of the probe tip you get one pulse. This will be photo cell will be forming part of uh, uh, an electronic circuit. So, one pulse electric voltage pulse will be produced. Yeah, in case there is no disc connected to in case uh, in, um, in case you have a disc already in a, um, uh, another another way of say let us look in another another way of uh, measuring this using this uh, lamp and uh, photo cell is uh, fix a disc to the rotating uh, shaft like this with the number of holes say 4 or 6 holes. Uh, whenever a hole comes in front of this say this measuring station lamp is there this side, other side photo cell. When the hole comes the light passes through the hole and it, it falls on the photo cell and photo cell uh, will be forming a part of uh, electronic circuit and one pulse will be produced. So, whenever a hole comes it will be uh, producing one pulse. In such measurements say either in the proximity pickup using proximity pickup, inductance principle or reluctance variation or in the uh, reflecting type of uh, photo cell or in the, this is uh, we call it obstruction type of photoelectric speed probe. The, here, the, all these things are, are part of pulse, uh, pulse, um, uh, pulse counting method of uh, speed measurement. The error in all these methods, error is plus or minus one pulse. 
And how do we say plus or minus 1 pulse for that? We just see uh, here as an example, say consider the disc uh, where the uh, hole is there as measuring station. When the hole comes, the own pulse is produced. Suppose uh, the uh, shaft rotates, start rotating at this station, station A, and uh, it starts rotating in the direction it comes uh, and stops at uh, station B just before the measuring station. Then it has uh, completed almost one rotation, but uh, since uh, at no time this was uh, in front of the measuring station, no pulse is produced. So you find theoretically it is rotated one rotation, but uh, no, no measurement, actually measured is 0. So error is 1 minus 0 plus error. This is a plus 1 error, plus 1 pulse is error. And uh, in another way, suppose the it is uh, the hole started just in front and, and stopped immediately after it passes through the measuring station. So uh, it has uh, it is registered as one, measured as one, one pulse or one rotation because only one hole means one rotation, one pulse represents one rotation. And uh, really if the size is small, you know, it will it may rotate at very uh, few degrees only. So in limit it may be 0. So 0 minus measured is minus 1, rota actual rotation 0. So it is minus error. So plus or minus here 1 ro rotation is the error. Similarly, if you have four, uh, 4 holes, so 1 fourth of the uh, rotation will be the error. So as the number of holes increases, the uh, error comes down. This is the advantage of having more number of holes. So that is uh, the uh, pulse counting method. Yeah. And uh, next is uh, we have DC and uh, DC and uh, AC tachometers, DC and AC tachometers. That is in a DC generator, the voltage uh, developed is proportional to the uh, rotor speed. So the voltage output of uh, the DC generator is calibrated in terms of rotation. That is uh, in terms of RPM. So it is uh, uh, then it is called a taco taco generator. Yeah, taco DC DC taco generator. Sorry. Taco generator, AC taco generator. That is simple. Gen uh, ordinary DC gen generator is used uh, to measure the uh, RPM of the rotor. That because ro voltage output we know is proportional to the RPM of the rotor. So voltage is calibrated in terms of RPM. Now in the AC taco, taco generator, what is done is it is uh, um, induction two phase two phase cruel cage cruel cage induction motor induction motor that uh, that uh, that can be used for uh, for measuring speed what is done is the 90 degree uh, there are two coils at uh, electrically 90 degrees and separate them out and in one of the coils you give the supply voltage say at a particular frequency so 5 kilohertz for example 5 kilohertz and in the other winding, you will get the output proportional to speed as per this diagram. Suppose omega varies, starts uh, at a high omega and uh, falls to 0 and rotates uh, in the negative direction. Then in that case, the EO output from the other one will be a modulated wave like this. So again, if you have only one direction rotation, we can simply use an AC uh, voltmeter to give the uh, magnitude of the rotation or rotating speed or if it is rotating both the way both the direction then you will get the direction by using phase sensitive demodulator and low pass filter what we what we have learnt earlier so uh, that is the uh, ac taco generator yeah if it rotates on both directions uh, anti clockwise clockwise then the voltage output should be given to phase sensitive demodulator and so on that is ac taco generator the last method is uh, the um, eddy current tachometer, eddy current tachometer, which is used in all vehicles, mostly used in vehicles, say a scooter uh, or, or um, uh, uh, lorries, in all places they are go they are using this uh, uh, principle, and it gives the speed of the vehicle. The driver can note at any instant while he drives what is the speed of the vehicle or bus. There, what is done is from one of the four wheels. Um, the through a flexible shaft, the rotation is taken to a permanent magnet. Permanent magnet is uh, is situated 
within a copper cup. This is a copper cup. Within a copper cup, actually, you have to join this. It's not open. Uh, I am uh, the rim. It's open, but I, uh, the rim you will see as a, as per the drawings uh, principle. So when it rotates, the magnetic lines are cutting the copper cup. So copper cup is good conductor. So electrical lines are there. So eddy currents are there. And due to eddy current, we have the magnetic lines. That magnetic lines interact with the rotating magnetic lines. We have got a torque. Yeah. So torque is produced in the copper cup. This torque is uh, absorbed by the spiral spring while it turns. Yeah. That is what we have. The signal flow diagram is we have omega as the input signal that is given to uh, the magnet plus magnet plus uh, the copper cup, copper cup, and uh, then we have the torque. Yeah, torque is produced from omega. This torque is uh, taken by the spring, spiral spring, and gives rise to an angular rotation theta. So theta will be the rotation in the shaft. The shaft is will, will be forming part of the uh, part of the uh, um, uh, part of the cup, and uh, when it uh, rotates, uh, a pointer is attached to the shaft of this uh, cup, and we find the the scale is just uh, perpendicular to the board. So when the pointer rotates, uh, it moves over the scale, which is calibrated in terms of known earlier known speed. We can write 0, 100, 200, like that RPM. And later on, unknown speed, you can just use it. So, this is the principle of eddy current tachometer often used. Now, uh, the, since it is RPM, if you multiply with the uh, circumference of the uh, tire, then it will be kilometer per hour. You can use kilometer per hour. That, that's how it is uh, calibrated in terms of. Next, we will see the acceleration measurement. So far, we have seen displacement measurement, velocity measurement, and now the last acceler acceleration measurement. All these three forms part of motion measurement. Yeah. So uh, dv by dt is acceleration, or d squared x by uh, by dt is acceleration. And um, the main uh, here also we are using the absolute seismic uh, absolute absolute seismic uh, absolute seismic pickup for accelerations. So, we put the instrument all system pick up as a for uh, the displacement as or as for velocity. Uh, here also the whole instrument is put on the uh, body whose uh, acceleration we are measuring. So, it is absolute measurement. So, the, the same instrument what we have seen earlier mass spring K s and uh, damper it contains it is put to the vibrating body fixed to the vibrating body by bolted to vibrating body. The same acceleration now we are measuring by measuring x o here. That, the, that uh, theory is obtained like this. We already derived x o by x i uh, difference in terms of differential operator by using the uh, by from the Newton's law we derived earlier for the displacement measurement. Same equation I written here. Now bringing d squared this side x o by d squared x i that is nothing but x o by x i 2 dot and uh, calling k as 1 by omega n squared then you will get a uh, so x o by x o by x i 2 dot k and substituting d by i omega and uh, finding out the magnitude for uh, sinusoidal uh, for, for the frequency response you get this equation for the magnitude response magnitude uh, uh, ratio x o by k by uh, x i 2 dot and uh, the phase difference will be phi is equal to 10 minus 1 of 2 psi beta by beta squared minus 1 where beta we know already omega by omega n the uh, frequency ratio. Now, you find the right hand side of these two equations same as what you have derived for the second order systems. Uh, frequency response of second order systems under dynamic response of uh, uh, instruments we have learnt already. Uh, so, uh, we the same curves have plotted here x o by k by x i 2 dot and this is beta that is frequency ratio and uh, same curve when omega the resonance condition beta is equal to one resonance conditions psi is equal to 0 is infinity and uh, for other values it attains a peak value here. And uh, now we know beta maximum for this the bandwidth this is called the bandwidth this is bandwidth is starting from beta is equal to 0 to beta maximum that is say for uh, uh, 5 percent deviation this one is the ideal condition. So, as it deviates as we beta increase it deviates. 
So uh, maximum deviations, uh, 5 percent error, 2 percent error accordingly, we get beta maximum. So 0 to beta maximum will be the uh, will be the error. So whatever the error, you know, we have to put it here. Suppose 2 percent error means, so size equal to 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.8 and a 2 percent error means 0.98 you have to put and to find out what is the beta value for a given size 0.8, we can find the beta value. That is beta maximum. That is how for a given, uh, for any given error, error, 2 percent error means the magnitude ratio will be 0.98. Suppose the size is 0.2, suppose size equal to 0.2 and the error is 2 percent means for 0.2 the error is positive side. So, you have to put 1 pi naught to here and then solve this equation. So, for uh, putting the magnitude ratio you should be careful in taking up the, uh, in for noting down the value of psi and accordingly take it. If the psi is uh, less than say 0.7 you should put a uh, positive side or all higher values it is power negative, it is smaller, smaller value. So, negative is the uh, ne negative value. So, it should be less than 1. For a smaller side, more than 1, you have to put positive side, error is positive. Measured is more than the theoretical one. So, that is how the bandwidth is fixed. But now, we find beta maximum, suppose beta maximum is equal to, uh, say, for uh, in a given uh, uh, a, a given example, maybe 0.8, beta maximum 0.8, that is omega maximum by omega uh, omega n is equal to 0.8. So, omega maximum is equal to omega maximum is equal to 0.8 times omega n, 0 to omega, this is bandwidth. We want to have more uh, bandwidth, so omega n should be more. For having more omega n, what is omega n? Omega n is equal to root of k s by m, this is what you have learnt earlier. So, for having large omega n, we should have large uh, the spring constant, so it is a hard spring. So, for measuring uh, the velocity and displacement by using seismic pickup, we should have a soft spring. But for the uh, acceleration measurement, instrument is same, but the spring, the spring what we have to select is should be a hard spring. That is main difference in design of uh, seismic pickup for displacement and velocity. Displacement, velocity and acceleration. Acceleration for acceleration purpose, you should select a harder spring. For displacement and velocity measurement, you should have a soft spring. So, this should be uh, hard and the mass also mass to have a large omega n mass should be small that, that also possible okay we can have smaller mass it will not give rise to any loading effect. So, generally the harder spring is uh, selected. So, that is the bandwidth and uh, phase difference uh, we know as uh, within the bandwidth uh, uh, for size equal to 0 0.6 or 0 0.8 is more or linear. So, this is what we can accept. So, this is the basic principle with which the acceleration measurement is made, but uh, making in this fashion it is little bit uh, uh, cumbersome. So, we have got simplified versions of the accelerometer that actual construction actually available in the market available uh, accelerometers they have one of the constructions here. That is first we are seeing the potentiometer type accelerometer just a mass suspended uh, on both sides by springs. And uh, instead of having damper, the volume is filled with uh, uh, silicon oil for a damping purpose. And the relative motion of the mass is measured by a potentiometer circuit. Here we have omega n, uh, omega n or f n, the, uh, the natural frequency is 100 hertz, around 100 hertz, because there is some resistance for the wiper to move over the resistance, is part of the potentiometer circuit. So, the relative motion is measured by uh, by potentiometer as an output voltage, as you learned earlier how the potentiometer works. We instead of potentiometer, we can also use LVDT. LVDT. So this uh, point we give it to the core, and uh, we will have the uh, this will the cylindrical constructions will be fixed to the uh, fixed to the casing, and you can take the output. So this is LVDT. Either a potentiometer or LVDT, we can use to measure the relative motion of the mass with reference to the frame of the instrument. Uh, if you use LVDT, resistance for motion is small, then the uh, omega n goes up to uh, 300 hertz. Higher, higher omega n means we have, got, we have got higher bandwidth, that is advantage. So, another type is uh, the cantilever type. And uh, here the um, x i 2 dot is uh, measuring direction is this one, here also it is this one, x i 2 dot measurement direction always the, in the instrument accelerometer, 
they write the measurement direction. So, for this type, suppose it moves this way due to inertia, it tries to in earlier, so it bends. Inertia force due to inertia force when it is accelerated, it bends. When it bends, uh, then you will find the stress and strain are produced at the fix, uh, near about the fixed end of the cantilever, and uh, that strain is converted into an electrical signal by using strain gauges. So, uh, strain gauge bridge and all it will build uh, either uh, by using uh, um, uh, um, uh, you can use carrier frequency amplifier. Carrier frequency amplifier, which you have learnt already. It will form the strain gauge, two strain gauge will be forming uh, two adjacent arms of the bridge network, and the whole instrumentation is the same. Carrier frequency amplifier, we have got oscillator, excitation, the modulated wave, amplified, then demodulated, and uh, low pass filter, and then the signal comes out. All those things you have learnt, I am not repeating those things. So, uh, uh, that uh, final reading will be calibrated in terms of uh, acceleration. So, how, the, how it is calibrated by the by, suppose if we want, when you want to calibrate, uh, suppose this is the basic instrument, we put it on the table and uh, then you will find G will be acting, G is the acceleration due to gravity. So, due to the G, the mass is converted in terms of weight. So, the weight, this weight acts over the spring and it deforms a distance. And the, dist the, the distance is measured by this uh, relative displacement pickup, and uh, that reading of the reading of the instrument uh, we write it as g plus g. And then now tilt the instrument just 90 degree you tilt it. The, now when it is fixed like this, the g acts along the axis of the spring. This is the axis of the uh, spring, the helical spring. When it acts like this, then it is plus g. That is, our uh, spring is being compressed. Now, tilt at 90 degree, then the spring will come in this direction and uh, no force will have, no force will be acting along the axis of the spring, okay, helical spring. So, you will find a 0 reading. So, 0. That is a 0. Now, tilt all the, uh, another 90 degree. So, it's, it will be fixed upside down. This will be top and this will be bottom. That means, the G will be acting opposite direction and you will have minus G. That is how the three readings are obtained in an accelerometer. You can check any accelerometer by, by mounting in these three ways. First, uh, as per the direction, g al along the measurement direction, uh, that you will go plus g and then tilt 90 degree, 0, another 90 degree upside down, that means minus g. So, you will have, you can measure on both sides, uh, the, I mean plus g and minus g in both directions. So, this calibration is mainly meant for horizontal motion when the motion takes place horizontal, perpendicular to the g direction, the calibration is valid. It is because uh, for vertical, when the motion is vertical, um, you, you have to be careful. The in, the in case it falls freely down, what will happen? What is the mass of the, what is the weight of the mass? Weight of the any freely uh, falling body has got zero weight, zero weight. So, when it is falling freely, acceleration is g, but what is shown is 0. So, for vertically downward motions, whatever the instrument shows, you have to add one g, that you have to be careful. If the motion is uh, against g, then you will find, uh, you, have to, um, um, you have to subtract one g. So, the, for vertical motion, you have to be careful, otherwise, the, uh, by you, by whatever we, uh, uh, we calibrated by using g, that is valid for horizontal motion. So, in a, when it is uh, when it is stationary, it will be uh, it will be shown g. That is uh, no motion. It is g for vertical motions. When we go up, then it's already one is there that we have to subtract. That's why for falling down from body, we have to add one g, and uh, for moving up, we have to subtract uh, one g from the reading. Otherwise, the calibration is valid for horizontal motion. So, that is a calibration, that is how all these uh, instruments are calibrated. Now, that is cantilever type, here we have got uh, 300 hertz omega n, as uh, we uh, if you have LVDT whatever, the same, instead of LVDT we have strain gauge measurement. Now, this type of construction is uh, uh, suitable for micro, uh, micro manufacturing, Manu, uh, manf micro manufacturing, this type of construction is valid. Uh, we have got uh, the um, mechatronic components, so silicon, the so called silicon accelerometer, silicon 
accelerometer. So the whole um, uh, the whole uh, accelerometer may be within one uh, within few mm square it can be accommodated. That is called micro manufacturing, and uh, that is obtained for lithography or uh, all these uh, photo etching principles are made use of. Uh, from uh, silicon crystal itself, the whole mass and the lever everything is made, and the strain gauge also will be made up of silicon, and uh, uh, that is amenable for the micro manufacturing this construction rather than the other type. That is the speciality of this uh, cantilever type uh, manufacturing. And uh, another type is reluctance, reluctance principles made use of. So, reluctance, reluctance type of accelerometer. This reluctance type of accelerometer. Accelerometer. That is uh, the resistance for the flow of magnetic lines that is made use of. Now, the magnetic lines are created by the excitation uh, winding. We have probably this may be. Uh, 5 kilohertz to it can vary 5 kilohertz 20 kilohertz depending upon the frequency of the now the uh, direction of motion is this is the direction of motion for this x i 2 dot this mass is here and it is supported by two, four leaf springs these are the four springs and suppose the uh, acceleration in this direction then the mass tries to occupy the earlier position due to inertia inertia force so it will deform like this the springs will be deforming like this that means the gap between the e stamping at the left hand side and the mass will reduce this side gap will increase so uh, correspondingly you'll find uh, here we have got uh, more number of lines created by the so magnetic path will be uh, taking the this is I, this also made up of iron and e stamping is made up of iron so you'll find uh, in this uh, magnetic lines number of magnetic lines will increase and to the same extent number of magnetic lines in this e stamping will reduce so the two coil, two uh, secondary coils are uh, are in series opposition series opposition uh, series opposition so the voltage developed here and uh, subtracted from the voltage developed here net voltage comes here and this voltage is a modulated one modulated this uh, it will have the frequency na same as the supply frequency around supply frequency and the magnitude amplitude of this uh, signal will be proportional to the uh, deflection here. So, the uh, deflection is proportional to the our uh, inertial force, inertial force is proportional to our acceleration, hence we find E o is proportional to the acceleration, but it is a modulated signal. Since acceleration take place in both ways, this uh, modulated signal you have to give it to phase sensitive demodulator and then low pass filter. If you care, if you want, you can use an amplifier also. And then low pass uh, carry well, uh, I mean uh, demodulator, phase sensitive demodulator, and then filter. All those circuits will be there. That I am not. I, uh, we are. Uh, we are not. Uh, I, I have not shown that. That we understand. That is uh, something like LVDT. Also, we are. Uh, uh, make, we are making the measurement. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, it is known. The uh, signal processing is known. So that is the reluctance type of, uh, of uh, accelerometer. The inductance principles made use of. The next type of uh, accelerometer is uh, piezoelectric accelerometer. It is very widely used in measuring uh, shocks, shocks and uh, vibrations because it has got very high uh, natural, very high natural frequency, undamped natural frequency. So it is uh, widely used type of accelerometer where you find uh, same mass is there. Say, uh, that is there. Now, the relative measurement of mass we were using earlier, uh, earlier types uh, potentiometer, LVDT, and so on, uh, the reluctance principle. Here we are using the piezoelectric crystals. That is, say, for example, quartz crystal is made use of to measure the displacement. We have learnt as one of the methods is using a quartz crystal. That is what is used here for measuring the uh, motion, relative motion of the mass with reference to the frame of the actual seismic pickup. Uh, now, the here there is one problem. If we when we want to measure the uh, acceleration in both the directions, the crystal can take uh, only one direction the stress. It can be only compressed. It cannot take any radial, uh, any any axial, any tensile load. It cannot take. So for uh, to avoid uh, that uh, dif uh, to overcome that difficulty, what is done is the crystal is always kept under compression by having a spring. This is a spring, leaf spring suitably bent 
and uh, by tightening the net we can uh, have different uh, compression in the uh, crystal so when the motion is uh, suppose motion is upwards then the compression is increase will increase and the motion is downwards acceleration downwards compression will reduce that's all it will, the crystal will never go into tensile strain that is advantage of initial compression you initially compress it later on you can use uh, for both uh, directions in one direction compression will increase another direction compression will reduce to facilitate that we have got uh, this uh, special setup with the spring and nut so it is initially uh, uh, assembled under uh, compression so now when it is subjected to any acceleration it produces a charge in the crystal and that is taken out and uh, connected to a, a charge amplifier the output can be read there there is another draw another difficulty in this uh, accelerometer we know accelerometer it has got bandwidth from 0 to some omega maximum that we you know in all the other types of accelerometers what you have learnt earlier potentiometer and cantilever type and all but here in piezoelectric crystal piezoelectric accelerometer this uh, static measurement is not possible it is because we know the uh, piezoelectric crystal for display measurement can be only for dynamic measurements that is omega minimum omega minimum is equal to for uh, that is equal to the same as single capacitor principle 3.04 over tau this is what you have learnt already for the uh, for the single capacitor uh, displacement transducer the tau is the time constant of that capacitor circuit or piezoelectric we have got uh, we know it is being uh, coated uh, metal metallic coating and from there it is taken so uh, in between we have got this insulating material so it is a typical capacitor so same thing holds good so mega minimum should be equal to 3.04 over tau tau is the circuit uh, electric alternating circuit for this uh, piezoelectric crystal uh, piece that time constant tau so it is uh, sometimes uh, omega minimum may be 10 hertz you know below 10 hertz you cannot measure you cannot use this instrument that is why it is used in measuring shocks what is shock shock is uh, con shock contains very uh, uh, um, varying continuously varying accelerations so varying acceleration up to this uh, frequency that is minimum frequency it is it can measure below than that we cannot use this one and what is the higher range here mostly you will find for uh, the omega mini omega n the natural frequency of this is equal to root of ks by m that is generally that is equation now the m is the mass of the seismic spring mass it is fine but ks the spring constant of the crystal is normally very high it is of the order of 9 into that ks ks for the piezoelectric crystal is 9 into 10 to the power of 8 to it varies 63 into 10 to the power of 8 newton per meter such a high value it has got so omega uh, natural frequency is also very high so it is of the order of uh, now uh, of omega it is of the order of 5 kilohertz that is now a bandwidth i mean we get a this is a bandwidth so it will be omega n will be still uh, maybe uh, yeah, maybe uh, maybe of this order but uh, the another problem what we are getting here is the size is more or less zero when it is size zero in the earlier case we, you, you remember x o by k divided by x i 2 dot for size equal to zero this is beta uh, for uh, this is one so size equal to zero it is going like this this is size equal to zero curve so range is um, uh, so for, for one person or two person it immediately goes up so range is beta maximum this is beta beta maximum uh, should be a small value so you have to substitute in that equation that is uh, this is x o by k x o by k divided by x i 2 dot is so equal to 1 over root of 1 minus beta squared whole squared plus 4 psi squared beta square in that suppose you can uh, permit uh, an error of uh, say 5 percent so 5 percent then you have to give 1.05 5 percent because size equal to 0 so this is 0 then from this you will get a beta maximum uh, for size equal to 0.5 you got approximately 0.2 beta maximum is 0.2 5 percent error when size equal to 0 beta maximum comes uh, around 0.2 because this also 0 0.04 5, 5 percent error only for a capacitor circuit or a piezoelectric uh, crystal so for 5 percent 0 0.2 that means into omega n so the omega beta maximum may be 0 0.2 so that is equal to uh, omega maximum omega maximum is equal to 0 0.2 into uh, 0 0.2 into 
omega uh, omega n omega n that uh, now natural frequency is uh, is a high value and it gives rise a bandwidth with, with which we get a bandwidth of 10 hertz to 5 kilohertz so it may be around uh, say 25 it may be omega n may be 25 kilohertz so then it it gives rise to say 5 kilohertz omega n is large value 25 kilohertz so even though we got uh, beta maximum is of a very small value 0.2 but still we have got measurement range of uh, bandwidth very large it is because that omega n is very large so we have, we can go up to 5 kilohertz whereas in the earlier cases uh, omega n itself is of the order of 300 and uh, 0.8 times equal to 240 so 240 hertz will be maximum hence they cannot be used for measurement of shock where acceleration is uh, so varying at uh, very high frequencies they cannot use it so in such instances we have to go only for the um uh, this piezoelectric accelerometer next type is uh, servo accelerometer so all these instruments up to here uh, they call they are uh, they are open loop systems open loop instruments open loop open loop systems their accuracy is plus or minus say plus or minus 1% of the full scale whereas if you want to have uh, uh, 0.1% accuracy and or accuracy then or uncertainty then you should go for necessarily closed loop closed closed loop instruments closed loop instruments and uh, this servo accelerometer is one such closed loop accelerometer here the basic uh, one, one one type basic construction it is being uh, sketched here so a coil is there in between uh, permanent magnet that is uh, actually it's a torque coil it is called and uh, that uh, is mounted on two pivot bearings with its axis is mounted to the uh, axis we have got this uh, mass mass is attached to a lever connected to the axis of the coil and they they uh, are the, uh, the other end we get here we, we have a plug which is moving in between two inductive pickups we know inductive pickups uh, we can measure uh, motion up to plus or minus 0.6 mm plus 0.6 mm or plus or minus 1 mm so actually they will be very close but i have drawn like this just to uh, for just for explanation purpose and uh, the whole axis is uh, to the whole axis we have connected spiral spring and the output of the uh, displacement pickup this is displacement pickup inductive pickup uh, given to the bridge network and uh, then the current comes through a constant resistor the re re voltage drop is taken as output resistor output voltage uh, output signal and uh, the, when it i goes through the coil then since the coil is put in between permanent magnet a torque is produced so this is a construction how it functions we can see in the signal flow diagram the signal flow diagram of the servo accelerometer so when xi is there when i that is xi is in this direction perpendicular to this arm xi 2 dot suppose uh, the xi is uh, towards us then the uh, inertial force will be uh, there uh, keeping it trying to keep it in earlier position inertia force so you have your talk this force uh, acting inertia force acting at a distance r from the axis of the coil then you will find a torque is produced the inertial force due to this acceleration inertial force is felt by the mass and that force is acting at a distance r gives rise to a torque ti on this uh, supported system the coil is a coil and assembly it's a uh, supported at the two pivot but this is pivot bearing bottom and top we have got pivot bearing so it can rotate about this uh, about this axis so a torque is applied and there is another torque coming from uh, the current flow that uh, that uh, uh, that is called tb when that uh, when this torque is larger than this uh, feedback torque then you will find uh, the, that is uh, the difference between the two two torques is converted into an angular rotation theta angular rotation theta by the spring that is that is so the it is called te is equal to ti minus tb so difference between this uh, torque is uh, taken up and that is converted into angular the angular rotation theta and theta times this length of this lever gives a displacement in front of this two inductive pickups and when it is uh, uh, when it moves then we we know how inductive pickups are functioning so the current uh, and it is amplified it is a carrier frequency amplifier again so the bridge output the amplifier gives a current output of i so then this i goes through the coil 
then a torque is produced in opposite direction trying to bring back the mass to its original position bring back so how much current required to bring it back it is a measure of the uh, torque acting on this that again uh, inertia mass inertia force that again in terms of the accelerations so proportional to acceleration the current is maintained here so that this is always brought back or near about the original positions required current is a signal that current flow, flowing through a constant resistor gives rise to a voltage drop eo so now eo is our uh, output signal xo that is uh, eo is our output signal output signal so input signal is xi2 dot and output signal is eo so it's a closed loop system so it's a closed loop system all advantages associated with the closed loop system is there in you know, open loop system if the any if the if the temperature rise uh, the spring constants will come down then it will show a higher reading but uh, to bring back also we require only a smaller current that's why the error is eliminated in any closed loop systems hence closed loop systems are higher or generally more accurate than uh, more accurate than the open loop systems up to 0.1 or even less than that we can obtain depending upon the elements you have selected